Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today we're going to block your knitting. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. We're going to block what you've knitted today. Sometimes when you've knitted something and it needs to be flat, the actual finished piece doesn't look flat. So what we're going to do is flatten it out by blocking. This is something that I don't do that often. A lot of the time it isn't actually necessary. So just wearing it will flatten it out enough. That kind of thing will happen. And you will get used to deciding when or when it's not necessary. When things have got more knit and purl stitches switching up um, across the whole piece, then it's going to be more scrunched up more like a ribbing effect so that it's elasticated fabric so if you need it to be flat and it's not then blocking is the ideal option for you let's get straight to that now let's go into the demo here we are then all ready to do the blocking what I have here is the difference between a blocked coaster and a non-blocked coaster and you can just tell this one's come off the needles I've sewn in the ends and it's still a bit crumply um, one option you can do is just to wet it and lie it on the table um, or on a tea towel and it will dry itself and it should lie flatter but if you want it perfect without you know um, um, odd edges more like this one then this is when we come to the blocking option so I have a um, large piece here and coasters and I just show you what we've got to do this. So we have blocking mats. Now you can get these in packs. Um, you can get them one at a time. We sell them one at a time um, just so that it's easier for you. I started off with one blocking mat and that's all I needed for ages. And to be perfectly honest, I don't use more than one really very much at all. You just need larger larger areas, obviously, for larger pieces. If you're knitting a jumper and you want to block the pieces, perhaps before you sew them together. So I use single blocking mat, and I'm just using this to show you that they will fit together. Most blocking mats have this uh, jigsaw type option. So we're going to use one today. And what I have here is just a spray with water. You can use a measuring tape if you like. I don't tend to, it's, I'm not a perfectionist, so I'm not someone who says it has to be the perfect size. And look at that, I mean, you lay them out and you wouldn't think I hadn't used a uh, measuring tape. I just used my judgment as I was blocking them out. And what we have here is blocking pins. These are called T-pins because they have a really nice handle at the top there in the shape of a T. So I really actually rather like using these. Um, that's the ones that we have in the shop as well. So you can get mats like this and pins like this in the shop. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this just with a coaster. Um, and then you can also see that I have completed this with uh, the larger table mat as well. So what we're going to do, I do this first, some people will wet it first, I actually lay it out first. I find it's easier to handle when it's still dry. So you want to use the grid on the mat to just show you where to pin it and just find that lower corner. You're going to go into that in between the threads of yarn and then at the top here just ease it gently into place there you go and then we're going to do the same with the other two corners so just ease that into place gently flatten it out ease that into place is that in a straight line yes that is okay and then that final corner can go into a straight line there following the grid lines like that and you can see I'm just angling them into the yarn, into the finished net, rather than straight into the finished net. Right, now we do the sides. It's very tempting to just put one, 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 but that will mean that you likely have a dip 
so we need at least two on each side here and we have to use that kind of practice every time we block something out. And I used a lot of pins when I was blocking out the larger mat. I'm not pulling it, I'm not making it, I'm not forcing it into position. It just um, is quite happy being flat. It just needs to be gently eased into your place. There we go, that one's just... That side feels a bit more bumpy than the other side, so I'm just going to put a couple more pins in there. There we go, that feels better. And we just need some at the top. Excuse my arms over what you're looking at. There we are. Now, in comes the eye view. You want to just look back and see, are there any bits which just look too out of shape? That one looks a bit bigger than that bit at the bottom. So I just double check that the grid is in place alongside it. There we are. Okay, and we now get the spray. So like I said, when you're doing this, you could measure it out. You could take a look at what I told you it should be in the pattern. Take a look at what any, any pattern says the size should be. And you can really make sure that it's perfect. I don't tend to do that just because I'm not not that worried about it being identical um, one to the other like I said it turned out pretty well when I was doing two anyway so now I spray it just gently and I do tend to hold it upright so it gets there better better angle and now because this is wool, the water will actually run off it. So you just have to press it in. Not too much, don't be too forceful. Otherwise the, um, the stitches will flatten um, beyond what you're actually hoping for. And again, you can just come in here and say, is that right? Does that edge look okay? Just double check everything. There we are. Right, I'm happy with that. So what you would do with a larger one like this, I you could do um, two or three coasters on here at the same time. What I do when I'm knitting something like this is I actually, rather than leave three to the end, I just left three so I could show you, but I would knit and block while I'm going. So once I'd knitted these two coasters, I blocked them. Then when I'd knitted this placemat, I blocked it. And then it's a lot easier for you to only use one mat rather than have to have multiple um, mats and then you need space to rest them while it's all drying. Now this takes something like 24 hours and something like this you would need twice as many pins all the way along the sides. So along these edges you may need, you need one in the corner and you may need say five or six in between the corners. And then you'd need four or five in between the corners on the sides and uh, then it would all settle and once you've oh there it is that's upside down while um once you've sprayed it and rested it that will take a bit longer because it's larger this one if i remember rightly when this was drying it took 48 hours it also depends on the climate if it's um if it's a dreary wet January here then it takes longer for something to dry but in the middle of the summer this um, kind of thing will dry within 10 to 12 hours and that's it so yeah I'm gonna have to leave that for 24 hours I would imagine then what you do is you gently take the pins out let it rest and then you can start using it um, and double check it both sides to make sure it's not still damp if it is still a tiny bit damp then just leave it again, um, just sitting on the mat. You no need to pin it out again. And uh, yeah, that will be fine. So that is blocking for you. You just need a spray. This was something like 199 not even that, I don't think. 
in a small shop um, where, near where we live. You could, I wouldn't use a leftover um, spray from something like a hair um, spray or something like that um, or a cleaning spray simply because you do want clean water so just be very careful of that. Um, I've bought a new one specifically for this purpose so that it doesn't get um, contaminated with anything else. You want really nice clean water for your blocking. Don't feel you have to go to all of the extra lengths if you don't want to um, but blocking really does help something like this just settle into place and you can see the difference that it makes this is perfect ready to be used um, for a Christmas festive table and what I will just show you is that you can get this full kit with the needles as well if you like there you go and we have green or red wool in um, your choice. Um, and we have different colours as well if you want to go full out and have a festive Christmas with some interesting colours. But yes, you could go and get the kit. And uh, this also comes with your pattern leaflet. And you can see that there. We get the digital resources too so you have qr codes if you get the kit you not only get this leaflet with a printed out pattern you get access to the digital pattern and the youtube um, playlist with all the tutorials for example this will be now on the youtube playlist ready for you to use whenever you knit up these and there you go that's your christmas table placemats christmas tree on the pattern there you can get it with or without the needles and then you can get your yarn all ready and organized everything's ready for you to just start knitting as soon as it arrives okay and of course yes you can create a whole kit for yourself get the um, pins and the blocking mat from the shop too so that was easier than it looks wasn't it now i know that some instructions some books some videos that you might find even out there will tell you to wet it in a bowl of water before blocking it I feel that that just gives you a whole other process. You need to wet it in a bowl of water and then usually when it comes out of the water, it's too wet. So you've got to be really careful with it when you're just taking some of that water out before you then pin it. So also you are more likely to stretch it too far if it is far too damp when you are, when you are blocking it. So don't stretch it too far and pin it. That's very unlikely if you pin it dry. So pin it dry and then spray it with water. I do feel I have found that is the best solution for definitely for this kind of knit. So the blocking mats, the blocking pins, the um, kits as well, if you want to knit up the um, coasters and the table mats, they are all available in my shop. If you're in the UK or Europe, then I can post it to you. Um, well, that's how it stands at the moment because of coronavirus. We've got to be really careful with our posting. It's taking a long time to get to places. If you're outside of the UK and Europe, then you can get hold of the digital pattern and knit that up yourself as well. Right, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been great having you here. I will see you again soon, I hope. Do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe and click on the bell for notifications as well. If you click on the bell, then YouTube will let you know whenever there's a new video. I'm here every Tuesday, every week with a brand new video all about knitting natter in many different subjects. I will see you, I hope, next week. Bye for now. Happy knitting.